Social media provides people, especially young people, a source of low-hanging purpose. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to The Virtue Signal. I'm Debbie Downer with my partner, Gloomy Gus, here. And uh, as usual, no, actually, we're going to do something different today. Uh, we always... But we, we seem to fall a lot into the decay of virtue, but I thought we'd maybe make a little more upbeat episode for a change uh, because things are not as gloomy as they sometimes seem to be. Um, I was thinking about something, Zoe, and I actually, I don't know what it was, some video I heard or something, but I was on my own kind of thinking about, you know, my goal in life is, my political goal is for maximum happiness for the maximum number of people. Mm. But... When I when I did some thinking about this, and like I said, I saw a couple of videos. It seems to be that that the one thing that virtually everybody shares in terms of their number one driver of happiness is not money, it's not their salary. Certainly, on when you ask people about their work environment, right? It, it's it's purpose. That's that's what is to me by far the largest source of happiness is purpose. And what I thought was interesting to talk about today was the difference between purpose and goals. Mm. For instance, you may be, in my case, it's like I always wanted an airplane, always wanted to own an airplane, right? That was a goal. Mm. Um, and if I had been the kind of guy whose purpose was to safely transport people from one place to another, then I would have been an airline pilot. But it's not. And uh, and so, you know, my purpose is to try and show people the way out of this burning building. Uh, and my goals are different than that. And the thing of it is, is that I, I, I genuinely believe that virtually any realistic goal is attainable by virtually anybody in this country. Right. Let's just say it's something simple. You always wanted to own a jet ski, right? Well, you can get a job, save enough money on a jet ski. That's a goal that you can achieve. Mm. And a lot of people, I think, confuse the two and they think that, OK, I've got these goals and if I achieve these goals, then I'll be happy. But those goals may not have anything to do with your purpose. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that's well said right there. Um, yeah, I, for, for me, I, I indeed had a lot of uh, goals. And a lot of times, man, sometimes you reach those goals and I'm like, OK, <laughs> it's like, man, this, uh, I don't know if this really lives up to the hype of what I really had in mind. And uh, but, yeah, you know, the whole purpose thing. You know, because you preface this by talking about happiness, like your ideas, man, it's like it's maximum, you know, happiness for, for the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. And I and like I said, that's a, that's a noble uh, that's a noble perspective to have. Just the, the only issue is, is that people got different ideas of what happiness is or different ideas of, of what satisfies them. Some people are satisfied, which I call a pseudo satisfaction to be miserable. And their purpose in life is to make other people as miserable as they are. And we see yeah. and we see how that just is. And, it's you know, amazing how, how, how much damage just a few bastards can do downstream, right? Oh, just definitely. a handful of guys can ruin, can ruin life for the, the entire planet. Yes, yes. And that's, that's, that's just what the, that's, that's their thing, man. And, and you know, the thing is, a lot of uh, what gets in the way of us being happy in a sense of purpose, right? A sense of purpose is that there's such a narrative that goes out there, man, that this whole experiment is an accident, Right. It's like we have we Bill, we don't have a we're not supposed to have a sense of accident. We're born with a sense of purpose. Correct. Because we were created on purpose. Uh, yep. And I'm not talking about the, the the procreated process. Mankind was deliberately made on purpose with a purpose. But that's why you're here with a soul. Right. And you're absolutely. not an animal or something. You, yeah, yes. There's something you should be doing. Yes. Yes. We're, we're, we're gifted with something to do. And it's it's leaning on the purpose driver to find out what that purpose is. Like, say, for instance, for me, I, I have a purpose. I understand, you know, who I am, where I'm going, where I came from and all that sort of stuff. And what am I doing for? What's the meaning? What's the purpose to my life? I have found that as the Lord says, you get a drink of this, man, and you ain't going to be thirsty no more. You get a bite of this, man, you ain't going to be hungry anymore. You got people out there, man, just depressed, man, and trying to find happiness, and they're just starving, man, and they're thirsty trying to find their truth or trying to find meaning to life and all that sort of stuff. And the Lord already covered that. It's like, man, you look hungry. 
<laughs> you know, yeah. starving, man. It's like, you bought something to eat. Hey, I got, I got this truth for you. You eat this, man, and you won't be hungry and, and miserable, starving Marvin, man, <laughs> trying to find out what your truth and what, you know, what your truth and what your happiness is. You know, I was in a hardware store once, um, which is a statement you don't hear often in Los Angeles or in California at all. Uh, <laughs> I was in a hardware store and I was looking for a certain kind of screw. And they had just rows of these little shelves, you know, little tiny little box shelves. And inside all of these shelves are all of the different screws available, hundreds of them. And it occurred to me that the amazing thing about human beings is that there are some people in the world, and, and for the love of God, do not take this to, to be condescending or patronizing. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, I find it miraculous that there are people whose purpose in life is to is to make sure that they get the right screws and that they're available. And 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 I thought that's so far from what I'd want to do, but it's not far from what they want to do. Somebody mm -hmm. opened that hardware store, right? Mm -hmm. People, there are people who love to be gardeners and they feel they feel that sense of purpose watching things grow. I don't have any of that in me. But one thing I, I do know is that for for most of its existence, this country had a purpose. And its purpose was to be was to be defender of freedom, mm -hmm. right? Domestically and abroad. That's what we were about. We were the good guys and and I and we still are the good guys, but the purpose of America is to is to maintain the freedom of the American citizens and and to the degree that we can, without getting tangled up in all kinds of foreign adventures and so on, <laughs> spread that spread that happiness to the world because the formula is uh, is applicable anywhere. Whether or not they they're going to you know follow the instructions is is the problem. Yeah. But but America's purpose is intentionally being destroyed mm -hmm. by the left, who's who are who are trying to remove any any vestige of nobility or or purpose or wh why is it here it's just it's just it's not only not, it's not only just the same as every other country it's much worse than every other country so when you destroy the national purpose you end up with this kind of national you know i don't like to say malaise because it's a little uh, you know a little bit of a boutique word that i don't judge this is sort of a, a a kind of a sadness and an emptiness and and I think on, on a political level, we all realize that the things that we believed were the purpose of the country were good governance, rule of law, uh, confidence in our elected officials as actually being our elected officials, which, by the way, for the first time in my life ever, actually kind of ties into that whole paternity thing, right? It's like, is this really my kid or not? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like when you you males are wired for for that they women know women know who um, every child has knows who the mother is but the father's a different story and when and when you send a politician to in a representative republic if it turned out that they weren't actually elected in a way it's kind of like yeah maybe i want to yeah i might want a paternity test on this one <laughs> um but but i think obviously the, the 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 national purpose the national mood the national uh character is expressed by its citizens and and i think there's been a great deal of a destruction of purpose among uh, young people gen z and millennials too they they weren't a, i don't think they were even capable of really developing a purpose because their whole lives they were taught that everything is about teamwork everybody gets a participation trophy if you run faster than other people then then that's you know that's just you showing off or or or, or if you lose a baseball game you know then, then, or you win a baseball game, it'll either destroy you for life if you lose, or turn you into an arrogant, you know, goose-stepping monster if you win. All of this stuff that used to allow us to compete and 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 play to find out what we like doing, because everybody is is kind of wired differently, which is which is just tremendous. When you when you have a concerted effort, and even if you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and and grant them that their motives, you know. Were to were to make for happier people, all of this generation and and the millennials as well, all they know how to do and all they've ever been rewarded for doing, is to complain about things, is to protest things. That's the one skill that they have. It's the one thing that's been rewarded. And there is purpose in that kind of thing if you live in a fundamentally unjust society. But if that's the only skill you have and the only thing that you've ever been 
allowed to consider as your purpose and you look out in the world and you're, and you're, you're out there to fight, you know, uh, Klan and, and Nazis and so on, and you, you don't find any real evidence of Klans and Nazis, then you have to invent the evidence mm -hmm. because, because otherwise you realize you have no purpose. You're just a pissed off, you know, 21 year old with a nose ring and green hair and, 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 and can't have that. So, so the, the, the key, the, 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 I didn't know this until just a few years ago, but I think the Greek ideal of happiness was defined as using um, all of your talents to their maximum ability. In other words, this is when you got the engine tuned up and all eight cylinders are just purring, you know, and, and you know this thing is generating power. Uh, that's when you are not just contented, but you are satisfied, you're fulfilled, you have, you are achieving your purpose when you use all of your abilities to the, to, and apply them to the thing that you, not what you want, but that you want to do, right? This is, this is the outcome that I'd like to have for my life. I'd like to make this better. I'd like to cure cancer. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to win the Olympics, whatever. And, and it's easy in a society with so much materialism as ours. I don't have a problem with, I, I'm, I'm damn glad I live in a society where I can go out and buy any number of things, but it is a trap for some people to think that that an objective is the purpose. If I have, if I just have this car, if I just have this house, if I just have this woman, if I just have this fame, you know, if I just have a viral video, that's not purpose, that's objective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once again, man, well said. You know, the thing is, um, you know, the politics themselves, that's that's not what, you know, makes America great. Uh, what makes America great is, is, is our environment uh, that's set up to guard people's pursuit. And uh, using your God-given talents to be of service to other people. It's not just about, hey, it's all about me and my freedom and stuff like this. Like, hey, well, to, in order to facilitate and to be able to fund your freedom and stuff like that, you got to provide something. You got to be fruitful. As the Lord says, hey, get out there, be fruitful and multiply. Not that, not multiply just in sense of having you know a bunch of children, but I, children, I need you to be fruitful. I need you to produce something, right? Do something with what I gave you. Uh, so that's that's a directive of the Lord Himself. And so yeah, we we have a purpose that's wired into us. And you do have people who are going to, uh, you know, they just like you said, they want to invent this struggle. Um, this and you see these people who they find they look for validation uh, yep. in, in 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 trying to create yep. a struggle. Exactly. You know, it's it like they they they've taken that as their purpose in life to to claim to be a victim and convince everybody else that they're a victim. And this whole empowerment of empowerment of victim, which is a heck of an oxymoron as far as I'm concerned. But like you said, you see these people, you know, especially with these feminists, man, I see a lot. Of, I see more. I see more feminists, man, with with their septum pierced. Then, you know, you used, to, you used to have that cute little like nose ring. Right. You know, and that goes back, you know, for a long way. Uh, but the the nose That's the ring, kind of thing you used to live. Yeah. yeah the, the septum piercing is like what you used to, to pull livestock along. Thank as far you. As I'm concerned. Right. And these people, they think that they're empowered. It's like, um, look how strong and independent and bold I am. It's like you have a ring in your septum. That's yeah, to hook them up and hook them up and move them out. You know? <laughs> that, that's what that's for. And and these people they're they're It's it's like, Bill, they're they're looking for more than happiness for some reason happiness and contentment is not important to them I because they don't is. because they have no they have no they, yes identity they yeah. have no purpose they have not they have not been encouraged or even allowed to develop a sense of purpose well there, it seems like their purpose is is to establish and force you to understand what their identity is as arbitrary as that may be i mean i was just saying the other day bill uh, uh, these people, these, you know, whether it's the transgender, uh, or whatnot, and with this gender fluidity, you can't define, they can't define what their so-called gender is. And I'm like, you guys complain about, and you want to be miserable. You don't want to be happy. You don't really have a purpose. You want to complain about how you're treated as second class citizens. You want to complain how you have no civil rights and you're seen as less than humans, but you are the one, very ones making the argument that you're a flipping it. You're an yeah. it. We don't know what to call you. No, that's exactly right. <laughs> and that's exactly wanna, right. You want to accuse us of making you miserable. You've deprived yourself. And dehumanizing of you. you. Yeah. Yes. You, you're, yeah. You're the one who's who's put yourself in this spot. Um, you know, which brings us to social media, which is every day I become more and more convinced that this is invented to destroy mm. a, 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 any kind of healthy society. Mm. And here's the thing about social media. I've never used this term before, but I kind of like the sound of it. Social media provides people, especially young people, a source of low-hanging purpose, mm. right? Easy to reach.
purpose. So their goals might be to get a thousand likes or have a hundred followers or 10 million followers or whatever. Those are goals, but their actual purpose is to be influencers. Essentially, they want to be famous for being famous. <laughs> Very few of the people that I see on TikTok, the really younger people, are trying to get followers in order to accomplish something. It's always just in order to accomplish me, right? This yeah. narcissism that it feeds. And and I saw recently just a, a video of this, this one, I don't know, she's probably 14, 15 year old uh, uh, young white girl who was just sobbing because she had the number one, she was the number one person on TikTok in terms of followers. And then somebody passed her, oh. right? And and she's just just sobbing. And I'm watching this, I'm feeling some sympathy for her, but I'm also thinking, well, if you put if you put your entire purpose of your life to be the number one person on TikTok, not only were you just disappointed, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> you know? And and this is the this is the danger of social media, is it is it promotes this idea. Social media allows anybody to communicate with anybody else. That's a that's a real blessing. But the problem is, is that people become so fixated on on the objective. I want I, I wanted this to go viral. I wanted so that's why they'll, you know, that's why they'll have their phone up while somebody's drowning or something instead of jumping in there and saving them, right? Mm -hmm. It's like that's not that doesn't outweigh the ego boost they get from, you know, wow, two million views viral. Guy dr drowning. Look at that. It's number it's number one trending on 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 um on Twitter, right? So it, it it completely screws up their values because because the the purpose because it provides something that that it's almost like um it's kind of like a drug high, right? It's like it's it's gratification, yes, mm -hmm. and it's nice to be famous, yes, and it's nice to read all these great comments about things, yes, all that's there, but it's it's empty calories. It's just yeah. it's just a sugar high, mm -hmm. and and. When they get there, most people don't get there, so they're miserable chasing this thing. But the ones that do get there are even more miserable because they have achieved what they thought was their purpose through a series of objectives, uh, and and now they they realize there's nothing in this house that I just bought. And you know the thing is, I, we can relate in, in on some level as far as that goes because I know with these people. They have associated this goal. They blurred the line between this goal and purpose. Maybe that's what they feel like their purpose. And oh, I found my purpose. I'm going to be, you know, internet famous on YouTube and stuff like that. And then they don't get it. And then they're, you know, deeply depressed. And we kind of know, know how that goes. We didn't set out to do this to be famous or anything like that. But when you look at your, your view counts, knowing that they've been skewed, and it's like, oh, man, this, this video didn't go as far as, as we thought that it should go. And it hurts because it, yeah. it because it impairs my purpose. Yes, I, my pur my goal is to get views. My purpose is to use those views to spread a message. Right, that is our purpose. We're we're messengers, right? And incidentally, and and you know, Bill, just on a side note, you know, I don't want to get too far off of this. You know, we talked about this before. And I just want to remind folks: the first job given to a sentient being was messaging. Right. That's what the word angel means. It means he's a messenger, messenger herald, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to say it in Hebrew, the the the, uh, the, the Malachim, right? They're messengers. They're deputies. Actually, when you break the word down, it's a deputy dispatched by God to deliver a message, whether it's a message of some good news or whether it's a message of destruction. So that's what. It, it, and you notice that the world is steeped in messaging. People want to give a message. Right. And, and there, you can either use that message to destroy or you can be or you can be constructive with their message. Our vocation, if you will, is to find different media to be able to deliver a message. That's what we do. And now these people, they're not particularly they don't really particularly have a message but they do want to be messengers. They have something that they want to report about themselves or about something that they're interested in or, or whatnot. But the end result is really to make themselves famous, if you will. Yeah. Our objective is to make the truth popular. That's that's right. That's, that's exactly right. That's what we're at. That's our that's our that's our jam, man. That's what we do. So, uh, but to bring it back into here, what you were mentioning earlier, you know, about um, you know, the founding fathers and you know, and with your baby. You know, when when a man sees his kid, you know, be born, there there's 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 a bio, uh, a, a biological dynamic that's supposed to happen. That kid is supposed to be reflective of their father, 
right? The father is supposed to be able to look at that kid and be like, okay, I see there's things that are familiar about that kid. I know that kid is mine, right? Mm -hmm. That's just, that's just biology, right? So, I mean, imagine the founding fathers, man, when they had this brainchild of, of the American experience. And man, can you imagine them right now saying, hey, this don't look like my baby. <laughs> this no. don't look like my baby because I prefer what, not to think about that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, and, and, and you know, and when the kid what goes, happened to you, you know, I left, I left you alone for three months, <laughs> you know, and, and this is, this is why I, I had this wholesome, beautiful young daughter. Now I've got this goth freak. What happened? Yeah. You, 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 man, you really went trans out, right? It's as, and I think it was Frankl who said, Hey, I've given you a Republic. If you can keep it. Can you keep what you were born as? No, you're switching things. You're reassigning things. You're, you're going all sideways on me. And, uh, and we're seeing a lot of that, man. And, and we're, we're talking about the purpose of America. America was supposed to be founded. I know people want to think that America's purpose was to keep down other races and all that sort of stuff. It's like, no, America is this unique experience where we are going to be a nation that acknowledges the God-given rights of man. Now, you're going to have people Natural that are going to, yeah. yeah, you're going to have people that are going to try to pervert that. Sure. You know, that's not that's not the Constitution's fault. That's not the founders fault. That's not the Bible's fault, man. I, I saw actually, no, we'll say that for another show. I was going to go deep in another man. I'll, we'll say that I'm, I'm going to I don't want to uh, spill material that we can have for another show, man, because that's a doozy. I want to get into that one. I but, can't wait. <laughs> but anyway, you see what I'm trying to say? It's like, wait, we're, yeah, I do. What's what's happening to us? Our purpose, our purpose for what we were supposed to do. And what we were supposed to be as a nation has been totally skewed. So here's uh, here's kind of the, the closing thought on this, on what appears to me anyway, to be either a complete lack of pur purpose or low hanging purpose. I want to be, you know, my goal in life is to be famous. Great. What are you going to use your fame for? What do you mean? You know, that's the objective. That's the that's the purpose. Um, but when you when when all of your attention is focused on a device you're looking at the world through a cocktail straw. You're missing all <laughs> kinds of things that are going on. And with the advent of things like Tinder, where you swipe left or swipe right, and it takes you about a second or two, eh, no, don't like the way it looks, nope, nope, maybe, and then I might read the profile and learn a little bit, no. What, what's happening is it, it's so narrowing your consciousness that, you, you become stunted. And more and more now, uh, I'm because I'm always looking at what's coming up, uh, doing my best anyway. More and more, I'm seeing people fighting back against this idea among young women, for example, right? All right, so what are you looking for in a man? Uh, well, he's got to be at least six feet tall. Uh, he's got to he's got to make at least three hundred thousand dollars a year. Right. Uh, and um, and, you know, and uh, he's got to have a good hair, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you look at what their what their list is, and two things come to mind. Number one, what do you bring into the table? You know, the the, the self deception among these people, especially young young women. Every one of them thinks that they're a ten. Well, you're not. What are you bringing to the table? But I I, I find it interesting and distressing that when they say what they're looking for in a man is, I want six feet tall or or above. I want five hundred thousand dollars a year or above. And not one of them have I ever heard say, I want somebody who's going to love me. I want somebody who's going to be there when I need them. I want somebody I can depend on. It's not even, it's not, it's not even in, in the top 10. Mm. And, and this is what happens when you live in a swipe, swipe left, swipe right culture, right? You, you, you are making judgments about people based on the most superficial of these things. And of all the things I saw, and I've seen a lot of them. The one that moved me the most was from a young woman who was, I don't know, she's 24, 25 or something. And and she's doing a TikTok video. She'd just gotten back from this event. She was just, she was just out shopping, right? And and she was she didn't have enough money to cover the groceries. And the guy who was behind her said, Well, let me can, can I help you out with those groceries? You know, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing well. It'd be my pleasure to do it. And she said, No, 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 I don't need any help. And he says, okay, so she's walking out to the car. Do you need any help uh, loading the car? And he's not being creepy. He's just he's just offering to help. No, I don't need any help. Blah, 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 blah. And, and this woman came home and started crying. She said, why couldn't I let him do that, you know? Mm. Because I have to be strong, independent, and brave, right? But she said, somehow, in this, uh, the details are getting a little fur, uh, fuzzy for me now, but, but they did arrange to be able to contact each other. And she says, I'm going to call him tonight and apologize and she said, if this guy had appeared on Tinder, 
I wouldn't have I wouldn't have given him a second thought, right? Five seven or or whatever. She says, "What's the matter with me? You know, this guy is concerned about me. He doesn't even know me, right? He's concerned. He's polite. He's protective. He's all the things I really should be looking for. And if I had not bumped into him by accident, which is how everybody used to meet everybody else back in the olden days, she would have completely swiped this guy left. And and she had the 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 intellectual and moral courage to realize how how mistaken her standards were she literally says i cannot believe how close i came to to missing this guy because of these ridiculous objectives that i had because i was looking at objectives i wasn't looking at purpose Mm, mm. I'm, you know, uh, how did she get his? How did she get his number? Did, did he just like say, "Hey, well, I, if I can't help you, like with your stuff," just... I, I, I don't remember. All I remember is when I was listening to her, I'm thinking, "Is this guy coming off as creepy?" And she certainly didn't think so. And I didn't hear anything that was like he kept like following her around mm. or something. I don't know what I, I, I don't remember. But they did, they did have a way to contact each other, and okay. and she was, she was going to make an effort to apologize for for not allowing him to help but mostly what well, what she basically said was look no one has ever done that for me in my life ever mm. no one's ever offered to take care of me i know this whole thing sounds a little bit sketchy because they're you know they just met each other and stuff but but just the fact that a stranger was offering to to help her yeah was so moving to her and that it's basically all she thought about and then she realized my god this guy is is the kind of guy that we all should be looking for, and I and I and in our internet culture, who am I kidding? Internet in our in our device culture, <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't have given it a second thought, and I would have really really missed out if I'd done that. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's that's kind of like a, a there's a basic level of our purpose right there, man. Our basic our basic uh, uh, organic as an organism mm -hmm. uh, purpose is basically eat, mate, sleep, right? So mm -hmm. it's like there's there's a purpose, and that's. There's nothing wrong with that basic. I mean, ours, ours is a little bit more nuanced as that as human beings. But I mean, and these women, you know, it's, heck, man, of course, any of these women can get any 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 man that they want to. They got the filters to prove it, man. It's like, look, I can get me any man. Just let me go ahead and work them filters. Man, I mean, right. And, and they could do that. But the whole independence narrative, too, man. I mean, that's that's what we want to be in America. I mean, we got a declaration of independence. It's like, OK, this whole independence thing, you, you're doing it wrong. But women want to be seen as strong and independent and they don't need a man and and i understand that you know because what a, a lot of the, the bs that men are given to now that's been generations man men are always kind of like you know dropping yeah, the ball but, on things but but now women now women are, are are saying why why what what's your body count i don't know 300 why are men not why are men not why do they not want to marry me well because you got a body count of 300 right it's not so even so much jealousy as it's just why didn't you stay with any of those 300 people yeah, it, well, right. They, they, well, they can't. It's they obviously don't have their inner happiness, and it's not. It's that's the right. burden is not on somebody else to make somebody happy or that's, make them complete exactly right. or anything like that. You know, as as the saying goes, like you know, you be trying out there trying to find you know Mr. Right or Miss Right or anything like that. Why don't you try being the right person yourself? You Imagine know, that. you know, and and there's there's a there's there's an inner peace and there's a joy that we're fortified with that we're supposed to be able to bring to the table. I can't make somebody happy. You know, I, I can't make my my wife happy. Uh, I don't, and, and I'd, I'd be a fool to try. You know, so mm -hmm. it's like I can't make her happy. I can't, I can't make her joyous. But I can share in her joy. I can, I can bring the joy that the Lord moves through me, and 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 and, and the joy, and and share that with her. But and and that's that right there is pure. It's eternal. It's always been. It'll be. It was here before me. It'll be. Ap it'll be here after me. So I wouldn't want to give. I wouldn't want to try to give my wife something that's finite. Something that will decay. It's like if I'm gonna bring you, if I'm gonna bring joy to you, it'll be the joy of the Lord because it's eternal. You know. So, but a lot of people are dismissive to that, and they think that they can bring joy and happiness and purpose. And, you know, and they want to go into these relationships or whether it's their jobs or whatever goal that they have to do. And they find that the joy of it or the sense of purpose of it seems to be waning or it's decaying or they get, yeah. uh, I think you use the word, uh, oh, the, the malaise, if you will. Yeah. This is the natural. It's, just, it's emptiness. It's right. It's yeah. the natural world, man. These things decay. And that's why I said earlier, look, man, I found my purpose, man. You, and, and that that is something that can never decay. It'll never suffer entropy. 
I will always have it. I have my sense of purpose. I have That's my sense of joy. That's a beautiful way of putting it. Um, I put in long hours, you know, and, and, and a lot of effort into what I do, but I haven't had to go to work in 14 years uh, because of the, the people that backed up PJTV and now because of the membership here at BillWhittle.com. By the, by the common definition of, of what we consider to be work today, <laughs> I, 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 I haven't been to work in 14 years. I work a lot, but the idea of, oh, you know, this is drudgery, you know, for people who are, look, I did drudgery jobs for 40 years to get to the point where I didn't have to anymore. Um, but it's not as easy as follow your bliss, you know, just, you know, whatever you want to do, because that ends up getting you $250,000 worth of college debt for a degree that's useless. And it was just something that was an interest of yours. But I do think that the, the reason people should be out in the world is because if they're not, especially if they're young, they're never going to have a chance to accidentally bump into their purpose. It's right. they're, they're just never going to have that that lightning strike, that, that that chance opportunity that's going to change their life and change their objectives. Because if they've got a purpose now, their objectives are in line with their with their desire, their mm. actual desire. So something to think about. That's basically what we peddle here in our little uh, shop of horrors, uh, which is made possible by the members at BillWhittle.com and to whom we are always uh, extremely grateful. So on behalf of my friend Alfonso Rachel, uh, I'm Bill Whittle. We'll see you next time here on The Virtue City.